We've got Warriors and Kings later on tonight. Big game. The NBA's on fire right now. Yeah, the Suns and Nuggets. Just Nuggets brought out their B team and almost stole one down to the Valley of the Sun. Uh, Pelican, or Thunder, Thunder. Keep getting them mixed up. Thunder. They beat the Salt Lake City. Uh, they beat the Utah Jazz in Salt Lake City. They're still alive in the play a tournament. They play Memphis Sunday. Got a lot of tiebreaker teams to go through when it comes to the Warriors, Clippers, Lakers, Pelicans. A lot can happen over the next three days in the NBA. But right now, let's stick with the Giants for a second. And we'll get back to it. We'll get back right back into the Warriors at the top of the hour. But I want to know for people and understand what the home opener means for you. You'll see all the bunting. You'll see fans out there. It would be packed. The lines would be long for crab fries and crab sandwiches. What does the home opener mean to you, Joe Shasky? It means an opportunity for, uh, you know, spring renewals, if you will. You know, like it, there's this re- revigorated feeling of optimism for the team. Uh, it feels like we're, we're coming out of winter, which is like a big one for me. The sun's out. And then for the Giants, it goes back to, and I was telling this to Spadoni this morning, it reminds me of my dad taking me to games early in the uh, in my life. You know, my dad used to take me to a home opener, and it was a, a familial event. And I've carried that tradition on with my wife, and she obviously went for many years before we even uh, started dating. And so right. it's once Oracle was built, I feel like it became more of an event. Right. Much more of an event. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, you and I are about the same age. And so, you know, the first 10 years or so of Oracle Park is expensive. Oh, it was tough to get down there. Very difficult to get tickets. This was the era of actual ticket scalpers. When you were younger, did you just go down there just to be around the yard? Oh, yeah. We did all the time. I, I, yeah, I would just go there just to be around well, the festivities. Well, what we used to do was you'd have the cash in your pocket, right? And then you'd go to Momos and, or whatever, and you'd wait till the third or fourth inning, and then you'd walk across, and all those tickets that were going for 100 you right. know, 80 bucks were going for like 10 bucks right. because it's the third or fourth inning. So you yep. get it from a scalper. And then you had to be careful right. not to get arrested because of all the scalpers. No doubt. No doubt. So you'd be around there, be around there drinking, having fun, just being around the festivities. and Because uh, everybody wanted to be there. Everybody yes. wanted to yes. say they were at the whole opener. Yes. And I'm sure there's over 500,000 people who said they were at the first ever game at Oracle Park. I was not. I was not there. Yeah, I was not. Kevin, Kevin Elster, Elster hit the three home <laughs> runs in that game, but I was not there. No. I was not at a lot of home openers. I think the first home opener I went to may have been with Barry Bostel, that base, and they got shut out by the Padres. Barry Zito's first start. Oh, yeah, 2007. That's his final game, yeah. uh, uh, final home opener for Barry Bonds, 2007. Yeah. I may have been my only home opener. Wow. I don't recall being at too many home openers. They had the All Star game that year. year, and the jerseys had the All Star game yep. patches on the yep. side of them. Yep, yep, yep. Um, yeah, I mean, I miss that 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 era of Giants baseball. Nah, <laughs> five hundred. Oh boy, I'm, we should have talked about the wives because now you see the YouTube chat. It's just out of control, out of control. Lay off our wives. Lay off. Lay off. They're good people. We wouldn't be with them if they weren't good people. Lay off. I have a wife. Lay off. Um, but no, home opener, man. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I mean, I, I I'm ready to see what they have, what they have planned in terms of the gimmicks. Like, you know, you get Bob Garner on the horse after a World Series. How about you know, when Brian Wilson sprinted out to center field? Right. In the Rays, yeah. the Wind World Series flag. That was pretty cool. Um Lincecum. Lincecum. Last year, even with Brett Feld in the boat. It was wild, Is but it- you know. It is what it is. Well, this is what I'd like to see today. Uh, I would like to see Buster Posey there today. I would like to see Barry Bonds there today. I'd like to see Will Clark there today. I, I want to see all the the luminaries, if you will, of the Giants organization, the pillars. I want to see Willie Mays. You know, one of the things that um, I was lucky enough to do was to meet Willie McCovey on the field before a game. This is before I even got into the radio thing. And he was the most gracious human being of all time. I mean, the guy was so nice. Um, and oh, to see was great. and to see him get his you know his love and adoration in front of the the fans every year that meant something to me and right. so I want like to me Willie Mays is the greatest living athlete ever right now yep. like still he's the, he's the last of a, of a great um, era of of not just ball players but humans and so I think he represents so much and to see him at the ballpark for Giants fans to cheer him I, I that still gives me those kinds of feelings. Um, is this the year they give Barry Monster statue? It has to be, right? 
I'm so sick of hearing about them waiting for the Hall of Fame and X, Y, and Z. Like, create your own shrines. Let me get in here because you're all over this stuff. You go to a lot of games. You know what they're doing. Are they going to honor anybody in terms like statues? Is Jeff Kent coming back? Is Lincecum coming back? What What's going on this year in terms of like, well, you know, last year, what was it? Will Clark getting his number retired. What's happening this season with the Giants? I haven't heard anything. They haven't sent out any emails or anything like that to tease anything like that. With Barry Bonds, if they're going to play this whole waiting game with the Hall of Fame, you're going to be waiting for a long time. Like, Giants, just take the initiative and, and just enshrine him however you want to enshrine him. Don't wait for Major League Baseball to wake up. Yeah, I'm there with you. I'm there with you. Well, and I would like to see them put together some sort of a statue plan for him. Look, I so, want Jeff Kent honored. Honestly, I, I want Jeff too. Kent and Matt Williams honored. I would like to. Well, I would like to see them throw a Jeff Kent retro jersey in the dugout store. Wouldn't you? Absolutely. Right? I mean, you could get them customized and make them that way. The other thing I would love to see the Giants do this year, ditch the City Connects and go back to the 1980s jersey. I want to see Coke. once on the road a week and once at home. I want that white. That I'm talking that. that the Coke white. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the curvy Giants look yep. and that SF. And well, bring they, back they the They've been wearing the SFs, though, right? What's Don't that? Don't they wear the SFs on Sunday? Well, they wear the SF, but it's block letter SF. I uh, want to go to the curvy the school, one. The old yeah. One. yeah. And it's got the black piping on it. Like, yeah. that was a great uniform. I do like the SF, though. The block No, SF. it's a great uniform. And they wear it on the black jersey as well. Yeah. It's a black SF on the, on the left uh, the, chest. The, the City Connect jerseys, it's such a fail. It. People think that they're really cool, and it's not. I That's the worst thing about it. So and, like, you know, SFA so drummer, I think he tweeted me last week. SFA drummer's funny. But he goes, Bonte, they're still dabbing. It's 2023. <laughs> I'm like, look, win some games. I'm not going to mind that. But if you start losing and you're still dabbing, what? it just shows how to, how to touch some baseball teams are to embrace today's culture. Well, and I'm looking at it right now. Like, Toronto Blue Jays have embraced their uniform history. And it's glorious. Oh, my gosh. The Kansas City Royals have embraced blue. their their uniform history. Now, they've made very little changes over the years. Yep. But going back to those baby blues, game changer. Game changer. Right? Uh, the Phillies. Phillies. Cardinals. Cardinals. All these teams. Why? You have nothing but incredible threads throughout the history of your organization. Yep. And you go with those? Yeah. That was... That was... The City Connects don't do it for me. They really do You know what they are? What? The transplant ones. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, they're still hitting the dab. Yeah, SF Bay Jerber hit me up last week. Like, look, look, Bonte, they're still hitting the so, dab in 2023. And I'm just like, how out of touch are we? Now, when I look at the regular team, and, and, I, and I'm getting encouraged here, I thought their approach yesterday at the plate, you're going to look at the home runs, but they went the other way a couple of times. My biggest surprise, and it's early, I'm not losing my mind, my biggest surprise is Yastrzemski looks really good right now. And I think the shift, and Sam Lubman and I have been talking about this, the shift uh, is something, now that that's gone away, I think he, early on, is the biggest benefactor of no shift. Lubman, what were some of the numbers, basically? Just boil them down. Uh, give me a second to pull him up. I got him all written down yeah, somewhere. He's, bat he's batting 240 right now. Yeah, but the, but the is, swings look better. Swings look better. I didn't like to play in center field yesterday. I don't think he's... I think we've overrated think his defense. He, he needs to be a right fielder. Well, I, I think he's a fourth or fifth outfielder on a, on most teams. Right. That's what I and I, I think people get really uh, mad at me when I say that, but it's like no, like he, he's solid, but like come on, man, look around baseball. What there I are like, dynamic players playing the outfield? What I like obviously is David Villar getting at bats, Who and he and he has a presence in that box, and he's looking good. Two for five yesterday, yeah. three runs. He has a presence in that box. Wilbur Flores looked good yesterday. I'm not mad at him as a fourth infield or a fifth infielder. Uh, no, he's I, fine. I can rock with that. And J.D. Davis is hitting in, in that yep. D.H. first baseman role. Yep. Here's the Yastrzemski information. I, I thought this was fascinating. This is a good job by Lubman to deep dive. Give it to me. Yeah, so really quick, I'll try and go as quickly as I can here. But No, slow it down. Okay, it so time. basically when it comes to the shift, they get when he's when Mike Yastrzemski is not hitting against the shift, he's a, 300, he's a 307 hitter. When there is shifting, he's a little bit worse at 291. But here's the thing. It's how much other teams shifted against him. So recall back in 2019, 2020, when Yaz was one of the more exciting guys in this lineup, uh, teams shifted on him about half of his at-bats. But then 21 and 22, he kind of became more of like a power guy with less contact hitting. They were shifting on 80% of his at-bats. And you look at his spray chart, a lot of his hits go right to where the second baseman it, is standing indeed, in yeah. these shifts. Yeah. And if this whole concept, you know, you want to hit him where they ain't, 
this year, the second the second baseman can't stand where he's usually hitting the ball. So unless they try to do like some weird, like let's shift the left fielder over to stand there, it sets up, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but it sets up a situation where Yastrzemski, he could have a bit of a bounce back in terms of just kind of seeing his batting average go up because the way he's hitting the ball, the launch angle, the contact, the K rate, the walk rate, all that stuff, it's all stayed the same over the last few years. The only thing that's really changed is how people play defense against him, and they can't play defense against him that same way this year now. Oh, so maybe a big Yaz year is on the horizon. Hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, shout out to YouTube. Uh, Twitch and the Comcast Business Text Line. This segment was sponsored by Go to State. Serving the Bay Area for three generations. When you succeed, we succeed. Visit go to state lumber.com.